Hey folks, this is Jason Good with the Good Life Outdoors. So today we're going to do pulled pork on the Weber grill. I'm going to be using the snake method. Some people also refer to it as the fuse method. Now that is a way to use charcoal to slow smoke meat. And it's something I've done quite a bit. I've actually really enjoyed learning the process. And it's fairly simple if you have just a regular Weber kettle grill or something of that like. Now I also have an old smoker that I'm going to be restoring. I'll link that video down below. Um, that's going to be a series where I'm going to be restoring my grandfather's old smoker. But in the meantime, love having uh, some barbecue around. So in this case, I'm going to be doing a pulled pork. It's a uh, about a six and a half pound pork butt bone in and run you through how I spice it up get it on the Weber grill and slow smoke it I'm gonna probably shoot for about nine hours at around 225 to 250 ought to turn out pretty good so y'all stick around Start with our ingredients for the rub. We've got salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and just to throw in a little spice, a little chili powder. Got the meat out of the fridge just to bring it up to temperature while the smoker is getting ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put the spice rub on there first. I'm gonna pat everything dry and make sure there's no moisture on it. This fat cap's actually, it looks pretty thick, but I think I'm going to go ahead and leave that on there just as it is. Sometimes I trim it off if it's too thick, but in this case, I think I'm going to leave it on there. And I'm going to go ahead and start putting spice on. So, spice rubs all nice and mixed up. Pour it over the top here, and then start rubbing it in. You'll hear a lot going down the sides, but that will all get used as I go. So I'm going to take some of my hand, rip on the side of the meat here, just kind of work my way around. Just all sides, even the bottom, because we're going to eat all of it. Make sure when you're doing this, everything's all nice and clean, including your hands, which mine are. All right, now we're gonna let this sit and kind of absorb those spices and get all nice and happy while we get the grill all prepped. Now, if you've never heard of the snake method, it's basically arranging your charcoal inside the grill uh, in a snake or a fuse and lighting one end of it and letting it slowly burn all the way around to the other side. And that gives you the opportunity to control the temperature, control the smoke. Um, you can place wood on top of the charcoal um, in different ways and it works out fairly well. Uh, really do need some sort of thermometer with that. I use a wireless meat and grill thermometer so it has a probe that tells you the temperature on the grill and the temperature within the meat so that you know what's going on at all times and you can make your adjustments without having to open up the grill. Works pretty well. So now I'm going to build the charcoal snake. I try to take some time doing this making sure the charcoal is put in here nice and uniformly so I get a nice consistent burn all the way around. Now knowing that I'm going to get about a nine to 10 hour burn out of this, I know where to start and stop it based on this grill. And I know that I'm gonna be putting 
a row of uh, two wide by two high on the charcoal and then putting the, putting the wood on top of that. Uh, spaced out to where there's a little more wood at the beginning of the burn and less at the end because the meat tends to absorb more smoke uh, at the very beginning. I've got my charcoal chimney filled about a third of the way up with charcoal. We're going to get this lit and then transfer it over to the beginning of the fuse to kind of light it and get it started. These coals are nice and hot. I'm going to start transferring them over to the beginning of the snake. pan in there, put some hot water in there, that way it's already up to temperature and keeps everything nice and humidified. where it doesn't get too close to the fire at any point. Uh, we've got our probe. Put the first one inside where the barbecue is. Get the grill temperature. Close to the meat as I can without being right up against it. And then I'm going to go and find one of the thicker parts of pork that's not up against the bone. So that we can get good reading in the middle of that meat. Here we go. Closing it down. Getting it started. So I use the Maverick Ready Check wireless thermometer. So this is the base station that has the probes, uh, one for the grill and one for meat. And once that gets placed, it will read both of those temperatures and then transmit it over to this handheld wireless uh, receiver. So you can kind of carry this around with you. I think it says up to 300 feet and check on what's going on. So you can just kind of set it and forget it. You can put in alarms where if the grill goes too high or too low, you can come and make adjustments without having to open the grill up and see what's going on. So in this case, I have it set for a low of around 210 degrees and a high of about 310 degrees. Now with pork, it's fairly forgiving, so I can tolerate those pretty wide swings. What I'm shooting for is between 225 and 250. Obviously the smoker has now equalized and is doing fairly well. So this is the temperature I want and I can control this pretty easily from here. So 
We're three hours in, holding temperature real well, kind of coming up to some sort of cooking temperature. I do expect the stall probably around between 160 and 170, uh, but we'll power through that and keep on going, but it's going very, very well. You can see the temperature's right there at 253, and that's about where I want it. Went up a little higher uh, in the 260s a while ago. I just put the dampers down and it's come back down to about where I want it. So, so far so good. Well, we're eight hours in and we're in a bit of a stall. 174, it's been in this range for a little while. So, just hoping to have it ready around six. Looks like it's gonna be a little longer. Uh, we'll just keep on keeping on. It does smell good. I love the smell of a hickory fire. All right, we're nine hours in and we're getting pretty close. Over the past hour, I've let the grill temperature creep up just a little bit uh, and that kind of got it out of these stalls. So right now we're at 192 and we'll be hitting that 200 mark more sooner than later. So pretty close to on schedule, a little later dinner than I was hoping for, but I think it's going to be pretty good. All right, we're here. Moment of truth. Let's take a look at this thing. Oh my goodness. That looks amazing. Oh, it's, oh yeah. That's going to do real well. The bone's pulling out. And that was nine and a half hours. So the charcoal snake started over here, moved all the way around, and is right around here. So I've got about that much more charcoal that hasn't burned yet. So if it had to go a little longer, it could have. But nine and a half hours on the pit. Man, this looks fantastic. Nothing go to waste. Oh man, that's good. All right, I'm gonna let it set for about 20 or 30 minutes. Just gonna wrap it up. Get some foil here. Not too terribly tight. Now keep some warmth in there. Let that sit for a while while I make up the rest of our sides. And We'll get ready for eating. All right, let's pull this bone out of here. Oh yeah, it just comes right out. Now it's time to pull the pork. See that I've been using these Bear Paws meat shredders. I'll link to the product down below. Uh, they work fantastic. I've had these for a while. The, uh, they're plastic. The uh, points on these are super sharp, though. You have to be careful, but they do a great job of shredding up these this meat. That right there, that's what it's all about. Mmm. Tender, moist, a little spicy from the rub. That is really good, pulled pork.
Well, it seems we all have a little bit more time on our hands nowadays. And man, there couldn't be a better way of spending a day at home than to uh, get something smoked on the grill. That turned out really, really good. I really appreciate you following along today. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, go ahead and hit that notification button so you know when I post new videos. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I appreciate each and every one of you who's watching today. Y'all get out there and live the good life. Thanks a lot.